Deborah, I promised her to take her this spot right here. Look, there she is. Coming and seeing us, you may not leave the ales around the corner. Go, go, go. Ooh. I'll go there. Goodly Joseph would like to say a few words. Please, sir, take the center and speak. I come not before you today and my two friends to speak of love. My friend John will do that. I come to speak to you of courage. Hey! <laughs> Well, what you are about to witness is a great act of courage. All along the great chain of existence, from the smallest atomies to the Milky Way, all things come together, but all things part. Everything that comes together through blind instinct, like the animals, or the forces of physics, like space and time, they come together, but they fall apart. All is ended. Death takes all, time ravages all. But only those who love throw down the gauntlet in the face of time, in the face of death, and say, we care not. We will love. On the shoulder of that woman, feels her fragile, delicate heart beat and says, only this matters to me. I care not for time. I care not for death. I care not for decay. I will love. I choose with her. She leaves her head against his chest and hears again a fragile, beating thing, a nothing in the cosmic timeline. It says, I care not. I will love. I will be joyful. I will choose. That is the magic word. Without choice, there is no courage. Without courage, there is no love. Are you with me? So I say, yes, we witnessed today here a beautiful act of love, but even more so, a brilliant, daunting, powerful, yay, thunderous act of pure courage. May the gods who dispense courage and the gods who watch over the brave Watch over our two friends and send them on their way, no matter where it leads, with love, joy, and beauty for all of us. Gramercy, good Joseph, Gramercy. Now it would be at this point that the minister would say, Maui is what brings us together today. However, he are not here, here out with the couch, so you're gonna have to put up with me. So I'd like us to walk through some traditions that we have developed here at the well to bring our folks together. We are here to act as witness for Ezekiel Brewer and Prudence Smith. Five, five, five. Come into this union before themselves, before the town, and before God. The first thing that they're going to do is bind themselves to each other, coming together in a union. So bring your right hand. Your right hand. Your left hand. Cross it over. Now, as a member of this town, I shall take the union cord as soon as I have not <laughs> Wonderful. Take the union cord. <laughs> and wrap it around. But then, it is their union that they must do. So good, good Ezekiel. I want you to take your other hand, not the one that's Grab the cord and wrap it around once, twice, and thrice. Look into her eyes and say, I bind myself to thee in love for all life. I bind myself to thee in love for all life. Oh, oh, I missed that. I want you to take your other hand, take the cord, wrap it around now once, not twice, but thrice. There you are. <laughs> and say, 
I bind myself to thee in love for all life. I bind myself to thee in love for all life. We're here to witness their binding before themselves, before the town, and before God. However, a union is more than binding. It is nourishment, it is food, it is feeding each other. So I would ask, good Juniper, where's me? Come on, good Juniper. She is the cheese bearer. She is how we feed ourselves, nourish ourselves. You will take a piece, break it in twain. Give it one to Ezekiel, one to Prudence. Jesus. Now, good prudence. I would like you to look into Ezekiel's eyes and say, I give food to you and love for all life, and then give him a bit of cheese. I give food to you and love and all life. Yeah. Huzzah! 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 Woo! Woo! Lovely, yeah. thank you. Gentlemen. I would like you to look at the front side. I give food to you and love for our life. I give food to you and love for our life. I give food to you and love for before themselves, before the town, and before God. And no one stay down with these two, it's right. <laughs> but a union is more than binding in food. Here at the well, it is bound with water, what we drink, what we clean ourselves with. Rudely rose, where should he? Come forth and bring the double-handed cup. Now this cup, it has two sides for both of them. And we shall fill it with the good ale of Adam. We have beer, but it's a tea stage, so. All right, take it in your left hand, take it in your right hand. Now you two, I want you to look to each other and say, I give water to you in love for all life. Say it. I give water to you in love for all life. Now you both drink at the same time. <laughs> are more than binding food and water. They are about sharing, sharing everything, sharing the highs, sharing the lows, the pain and the joy. So they would share. Where is Good Crow? Good Crow. Come forth, Good Crow. On one side, the man has a mallet. Have respect. He's bringing the coin. <laughs> Take the coin, Good Crow, and give it here to Prudence. Now, Good Prudence, <laughs> take this coin, look into his eyes, say, what yours is mine, what mine is yours, in love for all life, and then give him the coin. Yours is mine. And then goodly Zinkyan. <laughs> Look at you still owe me preppings from other night. Look into her eyes and say, what's yours is mine, and what's mine is yours in love for all life. And give her the coin. What's yours is mine. Close enough. Close enough. <laughs> and we are here to witness. <laughs> we are here to witness them sharing with one another before themselves, before the town, and before God. But Goodly Ezekiel would like to share something else with Goodly Prudence. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> 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 
Roy's here. Hawkins, hey, Hawkins, where are you? Hawk, come forth, Hawkins. Oh. Anyone on the web? Over here, sir, over here. I did. I did spend my whole life looking. <laughs> my needle in the haystack. I can finally say that I did find it. And may our, our marriage and our bond never have holes. And my underwear. Never has holes as well. <laughs> I know better! Wow! A little anxious, a little crazy. But sharing with each other is only a part of their union. In truth, they are part of our town, our community. I would like that some of our friends and some of their friends would have a chance to share stories of their love with all of us. Goodly Nora, where are you? Come forth, good Nora, come forth. Go up beyond, Goodly. Now, spake upon, tell us of the story. The washing well women and plow boys would like to present to you a knot of eternal love uh, so that you may hang it upon your door and you may always share that forevermore. I were asked to take a few words, but I could not find the right one. So I wrote a poetry. Your love inspires thoughts of unicorn, mythical white horses <laughs> galloping along a multicolored arch in the sky. <laughs> Mayhaps tis because it is a rare event to witness two individuals so perfect, each in their own right, complete one another so <laughs> We have all had the pleasure to watch your love grow over the years. We have seen you both plow the fields of thine own hearts in hopes that we can plant seeds of love and happiness. We have ourselves enjoyed the manner in which you have encouraged one another to sprout in ways that only you each knew were possible. I know where I'm We have witnessed the devotion you give one another and harvest in one another's happiness. Just as if your only purpose for being is to inspire a smile in each other's hearts. In caring for each other so completely, you have lived a love even our dear Master Shakespeare has yet to accurately portray. And I am certain that when I speak, I know that when I speak, I speak for all. In saying that our greatest wish for you both is that through the years your love continues to flourish. That years from now you'll look back on this day, this day when your love be overflowing, your cup is flowing over with affection. That you'll look back on this moment as the day that you love each other the least. Oh. Huzzah! Huzzah! Now, goodly muggles, goodly muggles, where are you be? Wanderers, well, come forth, good muggles. Now, come tell us a story of their love and their place in our world. Well, I will tell you the first time that I heard our crew talk about sea. Yay. She did tell me that they had been in a cart waiting to approach the fair and that there had been a long, long line. And there were many folks who were becoming irritated and unhappy and short of temper. But that Zeke did step forth from the cart and begin running around it. <laughs> and waving his arms aside and, and that it did make her laugh. And she told that to me the first time that day and I thought, she should think about holding on to this one, to a man who can make me laugh instead of becoming irritated and angered. That is a man who is worth some odd, yay? She should think about this. Yeah. 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 The third time that she told me the story that day. <laughs> I thought, I, maybe she is thinking about it. <laughs> the seventh time I knew she worked. <laughs> They will weather sorrows together, keeping a happy heart, and seeing each other's 
Continuing to play, he walked to the second level of Hades. All the creatures to sleep. Into the third level continues to play. There he finds Hades, asleep on his throne, the beautiful Eurydice at her, his feet. So Orpheus walks up to Eurydice and says, Eurydice, follow me but soft, for I must concentrate on my playing lest I stop and these creatures awaken. So Orpheus turns and walks out. Through the third level, all the creatures asleep. Through the Don't second level, all the creatures asleep. Through the Don't first the creatures asleep, playing his lyre. And he walks across the gates of the underworld and stops and starts to think, which is always a problem when a man does that. Oh, no, no, no. He thinks, did Eurydice follow me? I did tell her to do so, but did she follow me or was she true? Is she behind me? And he did spin about, tumble and fall and break his loot. And she did see Eurydice but three steps still in the underworld. And all the creatures did awaken and Hades did rush from his castle, grabbed her, dragged her down. And she were never seen again. And Orpheus died of a broken heart. Now this is a sad story to tell. You can cry and fight. <laughs> But, but we can learn things from this this day. First thing we learn, the Greeks are dumb. Really dumb. <laughs> that right there. Or if this story were of us good English folk, it would have gone differently, right? Yay. The first part would have been roughly the same. 
godly Orpheus would have had a mandolin perhaps here. Yeah. And he would have walked through the third level, all the creatures asleep, across the threshold of the underworld and stopped to think because men are men. They all spun around, fell to the ground, broken his mandolin, and see all the creatures of the underworld jump up and Eurydice, English Eurydice, fighting them off to the nail. <laughs> And Hades would come a-running, and English Eurydice would say, Hades, when was the last time you talked to your mother? She's over there in the far right there. <laughs> and Hades would have stopped and said, oh, that, that are true in a high school sometime, I should do that, I really should. And English Eurydice would have taken a step back, and then said, Hades, when was the last time you mowed your field? There's weeds everywhere, it's rubbish, it's shambles all. And Hades would have said, oh, it's true, I, I've been super busy right now. <laughs> and English Eurydice would have taken another step back toward the gate. And then would have said, Hades! To which Hades said, what, man, what can I do for you, please? What can I do? anything you can do? And English Eurydice would have taken the final step and said, do whatever you want. I don't give a ticker down. I'm off with Orpheus. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> and this is what we can learn today. <laughs> Godly prudence. This man will walk into the gates of hell for you. He will fight creatures well beyond his ken. Tall men with orange tights, vicious creatures. <laughs> <laughs> he will give everything. He will give everything for you. But he is a man. He will stumble. He will fall. And goodly Ezekiel know that when you fall, Good prudence will be here to help you up. <laughs> For know this goodly figure. She are a strong English woman and she don't need you to fight in her fight for her. She can take care of her dad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And now we are here. Now that we have shared their cup, their water, their stories and love. We are all here to witness Prudence and Ezekiel Brewer sharing each other with themselves, with the town, and the crowd. Our kids are coming on for him.